Um, uh, because uh, uh, when I first came uh, this morning, you showed me a film about your university. I also have a, a film about Taiwan. <laughs> it just came to my mind I should show the film, yeah. As a video, video, video. Yeah, no, video, yeah, okay. So there is a, okay, the last one, the last one, the last one. No, the last one, yeah. No, not this one, not this one, the last one. Just one minute. So you see, we don't just make uh, computer chips. Yeah, we all <laughs> we also have uh, our culture and <laughs> and other things. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, you uh, uh, you will help me change the slide. Okay, no problem. Okay. Um, uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, inviting me here today, uh, Dr. Watts, and uh, uh, the uh, friends uh, here at uh, uh, VIPS and also the students. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy. Um, uh, earlier, um, when you introduced me and, and, and Taiwan, you called us superpower. <laughs> this is my first time hearing someone calling Taiwan superpower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make me very happy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, you also, you heard my uh, yeah introduction about me. Um, I'm professor and uh, in Taiwan I teach international relations. But right now I'm working here in Delhi uh, in our mission Taiwan mission uh, in India as a deputy. Uh, uh, so I'm a I'm professor and also a diplomat. But I'm not the technology person. I'm not. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, today's a presentation because uh, 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 when uh, uh, Professor Mishra uh, uh, discussed with me about the topic uh, for presentation today, he want me to to talk a little bit about IT. Yeah. So, so actually, I try to make some you know, preparations about IT. So this will be among uh, among all hundreds of a presentation I made it in Taiwan and India. This is my first presentation. Talk a little bit about semiconductor. The first time, yeah. Okay. So correct me if I say anything wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, let's get into the next slide. Yeah. Um, I just show you the uh, the short film about Taiwan and also the um, uh, you know I'm from Taiwan. I but I suppose. Uh, uh, probably most uh, uh, students are here uh, never been to Taiwan. Okay. And how much do you know about Taiwan? Yeah, you. When I uh, first came to India, uh, which was in 2006 or seven, it was my first time uh, coming to India. Um, actually, I came to Delhi. Um, and at the time, I told people that I'm from Taiwan. People had no idea. Yeah, okay. In the next 15, 16 years, I keep visiting India, uh, and I, it, it, I think, it, uh, you know, gradually people knew, yeah, but uh, uh, they still uh, don't know much about, you know, Taiwan. Uh, m of course, uh, Indian, uh, uh, you know about America, you know about UK, you know about um, in Asia, you know about Singapore, okay? You know about Hong Kong, you now you know more about uh, Korea. But for tai Taiwan, I think it's still very, uh, uh, I would say it's a, new, it's a new place, yeah. What does the country look like? Yeah, and uh, what, do, uh, what do people do over there? Uh, people only have a very, very rough, you know, unclear, you know, uh, image about Taiwan, yeah. Uh, so, um, 
part of my job here in India is try to introduce my country to, to Indian friends. But there are some easy ways for you to, you know, to know about Taiwan. First, our president is a, 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 is a woman. Yeah, uh, Dr. Tsai, yeah, just like India. And yeah, so, um, um, yeah, she, uh, she is leading our, uh, our country. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, uh, she is actually an international lawyer. Yeah, also a professor. And she became president in 2016 and uh, got re-elected in 2020. Yeah, and her term will end next year. Yeah, and, uh, and she uh, uh, actually a uh, very outspoken person, very good in uh, international law, uh, English. Yeah, and I actually, and sh the most important thing is that actually she visited India before. Yeah, in 2000, I think 2012, she came here. Yeah, so before I came to India, uh, and she told me that, uh, she told me because she received me before I came here, um, and she said that uh, she, she missed India, and she hoped that in future she will come visit again. Yeah, and perhaps, uh, uh, yeah, next year after she completed her term, she will come, and uh, come to VIPS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, here uh, in VIPS, you also have uh, 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 journalism and also mass communication department. So, and you also have your own film festival. Okay. So I knew there are a lot of uh, film uh, movie lovers among the audience. You must know this movie, Life of Pi, right? Okay. Yeah. Life of Pi, a great story. Yeah, great story. And uh, it, I think it talked about Indian philosophy in a very delicate and a very beautiful way. Yeah. Um, but do you know that film is actually made direct by a Taiwanese director, uh, An Li? Yeah, he's a Taiwanese director uh, living in the U.S. and he made the film, and uh, it became uh, you know big uh, box hit. Yeah, and here in India, many people also watch the the film. But actually, do you know actually that film was a uh, was a made in a studio in Taiwan, not in India. Yeah, so the tiger and the sea, you know, actually they are in, in my city, Taichung. Ah, yeah, with the help of a techn uh, computer technology, so, so he could create the things that is just like uh, he was, uh, you know, pie and a tiger. Uh, what's the name of that guy? tiger? Uh, 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 I forgot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so actually it is in Taiwan. Yeah, so actually um, Taiwan and uh, India, we do have uh, uh, some connections. Yeah, okay, even a film, yeah. And uh, um, the third photo is, uh, uh, this, one, this one you don't know, it's a TV drama in Taiwan. Became very popular, it was very popular, it's the a top hit in Taiwan last year. Uh, the name of this uh, TV drama is, is called the Golden Leaf, and it means tea, yeah, okay. Today, uh, India is very proud of your tea, your tea culture. When I came here today, this morning, you keep asking me if you want more chai, want more chai, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Taiwan, oh, we also drink tea a lot. Yeah, we drink tea. We drink green tea, we drink black tea, okay. But one thing I, I think that most Indians don't know is that the, actually the black tea in Taiwan, all black tea in Taiwan, uh, was the first introduced by in from India in 1925. Yeah, in 1925, when um, when Taiwan was under Japanese rule, and they want to grow tea in Taiwan, so they want to find the the best tea tree, and they found it from Assam. Yeah, so the Assam tea tree, Assam tea uh, was introduced to Taiwan in 1925. Yeah, so today, all black tea are origin from Assam. Yeah, so you see, it was 1925. So in three years, in two years, 2025 will be 100 year anniversary that Indian tea being introduced to Taiwan. So actually, we do have a lot of connections. Yeah, okay, not just computer chips, okay. More things to, you know, to explore, yeah. Okay, next. Um, actually, the image of the Taiwan also changed. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, I don't want to get into detail, but uh, I found that uh, in the newspaper uh, 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 50 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, uh, when um, 
when uh, some Indian um, uh, uh, in, Indian uh, uh, politicians, I think parliament member, members, uh, they want to visit Taiwan, and uh, they, they, they contact Taiwan government and say, that we want to visit you, Formosa. We want to visit you, Formosa. Okay, the Taiwan's ancient name is Formosa. At that time, the Taiwan government was furious. Why call us Formosa? We are China. We are Republic China. Yeah. Okay, it was 50 years ago. Yeah. Today, if you, if you uh, call us Formosa or you call us Taiwan, we will be very happy. Yeah, because uh, we hope to be called Taiwan. We, we think Formosa is a beautiful name. If you call us Republic China, just, uh, you know, you see my title, Republic China, uh, actually, uh, it will make people confused because there's another China, right? Okay, and so actually in Taiwan today, we, we think that uh, uh, it's good for Indian friends to call us uh, uh, Taiwan, okay? And uh, so you see that the Taiwan India, ta Taiwan India cooperation now became, uh, you know, yeah, a, a term that has been used. Uh, yeah. So I think that the, uh, the image of Taiwan also became, you know, more positive, yeah, compared to decades ago. Next. Yeah. But where, where is Taiwan and what Taiwan is about? Okay, I'll give you some very general uh, uh, figures for you, know, for you to uh, 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 see. Uh, it's an island, okay. First, <laughs> you know, it's an island and, uh, and it's a very small island okay, compared to India. Uh, it's probably the size of a Kerala and in terms of population, probably the size of a Delhi. Yeah, okay, about 23 million. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, you, if you look at our figures, you know, you see, uh, that uh, our uh, like expectancy, literacy, urbanization, and the GDP actually it's very good. Yeah. Okay. It's very good. Yeah. Compared to you know many developing countries. Of course, we also have some problem. Yeah. Like uh, the average age is uh, 42 years old. Okay. What does it mean? It means that we have an aging society. Yeah. Okay. Many people are now become more aged. Yeah. You know that you know the average age of India. It's only 27. Yeah, you are a young, uh, you are a young big country. And so, so uh, Taiwan has technology, okay? Uh, but India has, uh, has a, a human capital, you have a human resources. Yeah, so actually this will be the common interest for, for, for us, for both sides to have a collaboration in future. Next. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, it's an island. But uh, actually, about seventy percent of the land are mountains. Yeah. Okay. It's not okay. India also have a huge, uh, a great mountain, huge mountains. But in Delhi, it's a plain area. Yeah. But uh, uh, in Taiwan, actually, uh, because of the lot of areas are mountains, so so most of people are actually living in a western plain area. Yeah, western plain area. Uh, it's a highly how to say. Uh, highly condensed, how highly dense the population, yeah, yeah, mm. and uh, um, uh, the highest mountains in Taiwan is almost 4,000 meters high, yeah, yeah, I like mountain because I, I do a lot of hiking in mountain, so in Delhi, you know, no mountain, <laughs> yeah, next, next, yeah, okay, uh, it is a small island with, with a small, pop small population, but if you look at the, our, some, these are figures I show you, okay. Taiwan is not small at all, okay. You see uh, that uh, our trade last year in 2022 is uh, 900 billion US dollar. India is a little bit higher, it's 11, uh, uh, 100 billion US dollars. But in terms of export, in terms of export, you see, Taiwan actually is higher than India, yeah. Okay, the reason is very simple. India is a big continent, so you have a lot of a trade are within the states. But Taiwan is a small island, and so the only way for us to survive, to develop, is to trade with other countries. So from the very beginning, Taiwan depend on trade a lot. Yeah, there's a difference between an island state and a continental state. Next, yeah, and uh, some more images about Taiwan. This is a Confucius temple. Yeah, next. And this is a typical, you know, scene of uh, Taipei Street. Yeah, uh, just, li just like you see uh, in Tokyo or Korea, you know, yeah. a lot of people, nightlife. Thank you. Next. This is a, a National Opera House in my city, Taichung. 
yeah, very modern architecture. And this is a, a martial arts arena in, in Tainan, my hometown. And actually, this is, the, that, that, this is not a, a Chinese-style building. This is a Japanese. Yeah, OK, Japanese uh, uh, architecture. So it means that because the Taiwan was colonized by Japan, so actually we receive a lot of Japanese influence. And next, this is Hakka, Hakka mansion. Here you also, India, you have a lot of Hakka noodle. Huh? Ah, OK. Hakka is actually a, a linguistic group of uh, uh, people, yeah. And uh, the, uh, in Taiwan, we also have a Hakka population, yeah. Next. And this is a Central Mountain Range, next. Yeah, and uh, on the eastern coast uh, uh, areas, uh, very beautiful place, you must see. Next. And uh, we also have uh, native tribes, native tribes, just na similar to the northeast of India. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, 16 different tribes. Yeah, so I show, when I went to, um, when I went to Mizoram and also to uh, Nagaland, I was in Nagaland last month, and I showed the photos of Taiwan native tribe. They said, oh, yeah, they are very similar to us. Yeah, same thing. When I was in Taiwan, I showed the photos of uh, Indian Northeast. Uh, they also feel, feel you know, like same, yeah, same similar culture and sim yeah, and similar uh, uh, like uh, living habits. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So that is the the, <laughs> the image of Taiwan. Yeah, but the, your impression about Taiwan in general, in general, is still uh, considered Taiwan is a high tech, high technology island. Okay, yeah, we make uh, mobile phones, computers, yeah, all major IT products. Next. And uh, um, you remember uh, uh, during the COVID time, uh, it was uh, in, 2000, in 2020, 2021, and when the COVID was very serious uh, all over the world, including India. Uh, I remember uh, in um, international media, Wall Street Journal, yeah, and some international media, they, they had this report. Yeah, I think it is early 2021. They say that the, the world is a danger, dangerously depend on Taiwan for semiconductors. Yeah, similar uh, report came out uh, 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 on different media. And here in India also, uh, the people are talking, oh, OK. Oh, Taiwan is that big. Yeah, Taiwan is that important because uh, the most of computer chips uh, we use are made in Taiwan. Yeah. So suddenly, suddenly Taiwan became a spotlight. You know, suddenly Taiwan became, became a hot spot. And then everybody pay attention to Taiwan. Yeah. Earlier people didn't. Yeah. People, oh, what is Taiwan? I don't care. Yeah. I don't know where it is. But suddenly people think it is an important place. They want to know more about. So I receive. Uh, I keep after the COVID. I receive a lot of invitations. <laughs> from various uh, think tanks and universities. Hey, you want to, I want to know more about your country. Come and uh, talk. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Uh, but Taiwan is not uh, uh, the manufacturer of a semiconductor from the very beginning. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, 50 years ago, Taiwan was a kingdom of a Barbie dolls. Yeah. Do you know there's a Barbie movie recently? Yeah. Did you see that? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you're, if you're interested, you see. Because at the... When, when Taiwan people see the Bobby uh, movie, and they have a very special feeling, okay? Because uh, uh, most of Bobby's, most of the Bobby dolls uh, uh, were made in Taiwan. From 1967 to 1987, for about 20 years, uh, Taiwan, make, Taiwan made uh, uh, roughly one billion, roughly one billion of Bobby dolls. Yeah, about 80, percent of the Barbie dolls around the world are made in Taiwan. Yeah, there is a, there's a, there's a, a, a county in tai, in, near Taipei, it's called Taishan. You know, at the peak time, 80 percent of the girls are working in the factory making Barbie dolls. Yeah, so Taiwan has a very special feeling about this, you know, fashion doll. Yeah. But today, of course, no Barbie doll made in Taiwan. Yeah, after 1987, they shipped uh, elsewhere. Yeah, and uh, today we make uh, semiconductor chips. Actually, it started in 1987, uh, roughly the same time when the you know uh, uh, these uh, toy factories left Taiwan. Yeah, and in 2027, Taiwan produced. Yeah, earlier uh, Dr. Vaz also said that we produce over 60 percent of the world's semiconductors and over 90 percent of the most advanced ones. Yeah, so this is Taiwan now today. Yeah, so my. So what I want to uh, emphasize is uh, what makes this change? 
yeah, what's the what's the what's the reason that the Taiwan, you know, became like this today? And here you will see uh, that the, uh, the change of the Taiwan's uh, output uh, 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 value. Okay, uh, I list the three different items: uh, food stuff, garment, and uh, electronic machineries. Okay, in the 1950s. Okay, in the 1950s, uh, actually Taiwan was the major exporter of bananas. Okay and pineapples. Taiwan was the largest exporter of banana in 1950s. Yeah. And, uh, and later, later uh, it, Taiwan became a garment, garment kingdom. Yeah, 1960s, Taiwan, uh, inter, uh, Taiwan export a lot of uh, garment, you know, shoes, uh, the clothes. Yeah. And it, it, it came to the peak in the 1970s and 80s. Yeah, and then you see, eventually, the export of foodstuff and garment declined. And then uh, the export of uh, electronic you know, product gradually increased. Okay? Yeah, so you see, you see the change of the society. Next. Yeah. And the why uh, Taiwan if, uh, gradually shifted to manufacture of, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, electronics and uh, IT products? It is because the world the developed in this way, okay, yeah. First IC was uh, invented uh, uh, by Americans in 1946, just right after the uh, Second World War, yeah. But uh, Americans uh, did not keep their advantage because uh, uh, you to make uh, computer chips, you, you have to find some uh, computer chips or ICs, you have to find some place that the, manufact uh, that the production cost will be lower. America, you know, after, after World War II, it's the most, was the most advanced country in the world. The, even the labor cost was also very high. So who make a, 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 a IC or who make a, a, these, a, 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 these, a, these a, a electronic uh, parts? Who? Japan, right? Yeah. So Japan, uh, in, in the 1950s and 60s, began to develop their own electronic industry. Yeah, in 1964, the Japanese made an uh, uh, IC, suppressed the amount of the U.S., and Japan became the largest uh, manufacturer of electronic products. And to, even today, right, the biggest brands like Sony, Toyota, yeah, they are all, all Japanese companies. Yeah, but the Japan, did, J Japan uh, could not maintain their ad advantage uh, uh, forever, yeah, because the other c countries also have a lower production cost. Who? Uh, uh, first, uh, it was uh, uh, Korea, okay, and uh, uh, Singapore, yeah, and uh, and uh, Hong Kong, and of course Taiwan, yeah. In 1969, uh, Intel invented the DRAM. Okay, I think you know this. Okay, yeah. And the manufacture of uh, such uh, 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 computer chips, uh, you need uh, uh, more skilled laborers. Okay, and uh, also you need uh, actually it's the most important. Is you also need the government support to promote the industry like this. So after that, you can see that uh, even Japan could not maintain their advantage. So a lot of these uh, uh, manufacture, uh, I mean the production of the, these uh, ICs and uh, 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 chips uh, gradually shifted to Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, and also Hong Kong. Yeah. So in the 1970s, uh, Taiwan and these uh, other uh, areas was also called uh, Asian Tigers, right? Yeah. The, the name of Asian Tiger uh, came out in 1970s and also in 1980s because of that. These societies uh, became the key manufacturer for these uh, IC parts. Yeah. And the IC and uh, these electronic parts are, are so important for our daily life. Yeah. At that time, of course, there was no mobile phone, but we all have a TV sets, we have a radios, we have a washing machines, we have a, yeah, so all those need the ICs. Yeah. In 1980, in 1980, Taiwan government uh, 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 devoted some funding, so we built up the first, the first semiconductor company. It's called UMC. Yeah, yeah, UMC. It's the first one. But the UMC did not develop to be the biggest one, because that, that uh, uh, some some people are smarter than them. Okay, uh, a person called Morris Chang. He was working in the U.S. He moved back to Taiwan in 1980s, and in 1987, 
he got some funding from government and some other funding from actually from the Philips, the Dutch company. So actually, uh, the the uh, the uh, TSMC uh, was a funded a part funding from Taiwan government and part funding from the Dutch company. In 1987, they created TSMC. Yeah, and TMC, TSMC today is the giant of the entire uh, semiconductor uh, manufacturing. Next. Okay, uh, this is the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, technical slide of my whole presentation today. Yeah, so for those who are good in IT engineering, you know what it is about. Okay, there are four different types of the IC. Okay, uh, but uh, I want to show, what I want to say is that uh, uh, when uh, people say that the Taiwan is the giant, is a superpower of a, of a semiconductor uh, uh, chips, actually it is, it is wrong, okay? Because we don't produce everything. Taiwan is only good in manufacture certain, certain chips. Yeah, because that the, like, a, like an analog IC, yeah, uh, the biggest manufacturer today is still Texas Instruments. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and the Korean company like Samsung, they are also very good in, uh, in, uh, in producing memory ICs. Taiwanese companies like TSMC, yeah, they are, they are good in making logic IC, particularly those who use in iPhones, your smartphones, okay. Their ICs are made, yeah, mainly by Taiwanese companies in Taiwan, okay. So, when India now uh, want a, a semiconductor, you want your own semiconductor industry, you also have to be you know, clear about what kind of, what kind of semiconductor pr uh, products you want. Yeah, okay, yeah. You want, the, you want to make a logic IC, or you want to make a me memory IC, you, or you want to make others, yeah. And the technology is not the only concern Okay, the more, the, the more important is that, of course, is a production cost. Yeah, and uh, actually today, the main competitor for India in this IC race is China. Yeah, okay, I, I probably get into this point later. Next. Yeah. So, when we talk about, when you talk about uh, 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 semiconductor manufacturing, there are different models. Yeah, I try to uh, also talk to our Indian friends. Yeah, what kind of, you, you, you don't, ju don't just look at the, the success of a TSMC. Yeah, you also have to see that the, what will be the best model for India. Of course, uh, that, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a IDM model. That is a company, they do design, they also do produce, and they also do marketing. Yeah, do everything together, like, a, like Intel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, to some extent, uh, uh, Samsung is also like this. Yeah, Samsung has its own brand. Okay, but you see, what is the most uh, uh, famous brand of uh, you know like a, uh, like like a electronic product of Taiwan? You have to think, right? You know about TSMC, but probably you don't know. You don't have you know a real name, brand name of Taiwan that is uh, famous for ele electronic products. Yeah, but uh, Intel or Samsung, they are good. They are I IDM. Yeah. What Taiwan is good is called foundry. Yeah. Foundry is a way of uh, making computer chips. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, company like a TSMC, they will tell companies, they will tell Intel, say, okay, you just design the chips, okay, and uh, you sell the chips, but we will do manufacture only. Okay, so you can give the, the, the most uh, tough task to us. We will produce the most the advanced and the, the most the sophisticated computer chips for you. You give us your, your, your design and we will do for you. And our, our product will meet your quality requirement. Yeah. And they succeeded. So not every uh, company in the world are doing this foundry uh, uh, model, but TSMC is the most success successful. Yeah. And also some other companies, uh, they, they do fabulous. They do design, but they don't produce. And who produce? Of course, t a TSMC. Okay, like uh, uh, Nvidia. Yeah. Okay. They devoted more energy, funding resources for chip design. Yeah. But of course, they cannot do uh, the entire design. They also have to franchise to other smaller companies to design certain parts. That is a design service. 
like the, the Dutch company ARM, they only they only have their own you know a framework, and they sell it to other companies. Uh, then they do the chip design, yeah. And uh, also companies uh, they do they they provide the equipment for producing for manufacturing I uh, 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 ICs or semiconductors, uh, like uh, this uh, ASML. It's a Dutch company because uh, you want to make computer chips, you need the machines, right? Who made the machines? It's ASML. Yeah. Okay. And of course. Uh, the uh, machines are made by SM, they also need a sophisticated uh, computer chips, uh, and those are made by TSMC. Yeah, okay. So, what I want to say is that uh, 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 IT industry is actually not just one industry, it's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem, okay? And it took Taiwan 40 years to, to build up this ecosystem. Yeah, and uh, so, um, uh, after 19, uh, in the past 20 years, uh, there are some change of the industry. That is, uh, some, uh, some chips uh, uh, better to move out to China, to other countries, because they have a lower production cost. So, so some you know, not so advanced chip manufacturing now move to China. Of course, uh, also some, go to, some went to Malaysia, some went to Vietnam. Yeah, but what Taiwan do? Taiwan keep the most uh, advanced, the, mo the, the manufacture of the most uh, advanced uh, ICs. This is uh, th the way Taiwan keep its own advantage. And ta in Taiwan, all these companies, uh, they form a big ecosystem. Yeah, you see, even, even the gloves, okay, when you work in, 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 the, in the foundry, factory, you also need some suit, you also need gloves, you also need mask. All these has they also have a special type of uh, you know equipment. They they are all made by other Taiwanese companies. So it became a very big, very big ecosystem. Yeah, and of course the most impo important part is uh, is the talent, the people, the engineers. Yeah, who can really work on site? Yeah, who have a sufficient knowledge and training? Who could run you know the the machines of billions of US dollars? Yeah, and only in Taiwan we could create this ecosystem. Yeah. So, next. Next. Yeah. So, in Taiwan, uh, when uh, when we talk about the entire, you know, like uh, IC industry, it's not just the uh, IC manufacturer. It is also about IC design and also about IC packaging and testing. Like uh, Macron, now they're investing in India. They are doing the packaging and testing. Yeah, but packaging in and actually I would say that the packaging and the testing are easy way, yeah, for you to get into the IT industry. Uh, countries like uh, Malaysia and and uh, and uh, Vietnam are also doing that. So for India, the best strategy, the best strategy for 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 IT manufacturing is not just focusing on the manufacturer part. You also have to see what will be your potential and advantage in IC design and also in packaging and testing. Yeah. So you see the Micron, Micron they know. So they came here to Gujarat to, to build up their own factory because they want to use uh, India's you know, human resources yeah, to do that, to, to do packaging and testing. Yeah. And uh, India's engineers in Silicon Valley, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can imagine how many of them means that uh, India has some potential in IC design. Yeah, okay. So, this is my advice about, you know, uh, developing IT industry uh, in India and uh, probably the way that uh, Taiwan could contribute. Because all these companies, Taiwanese, these are all Taiwanese companies, uh, they more or less have interest coming to India. Okay, next. Yeah, okay. This I think I don't need to repeat, okay, in terms of, in terms of uh, our, you know, like a market share in the world. Next. Yeah. yeah. And not just the IT, also, you know, other, yeah, high tech. All these are uh, num Taiwan number one in terms of market share in the world, number one. Next. Okay, now I want to, uh, if you allow me, I also want to talk a little bit about the strategic and security issues. The reason is that uh, you see if uh, uh, the, the major uh, uh, IT uh, uh, products, uh, uh, semiconductor chips are made in Taiwan, and uh, Taiwan, if, if Taiwan is in a very peaceful situation, yeah, it's a peaceful place, then we're no problem, yeah. But the problem is that right now, uh, Taiwan and uh, the surrounding areas are now have some problem, okay, 
Yeah, because uh, China, they impose a tremendous military pressure on Taiwan. This is a photo uh, by our Navy, the Taiwanese Navy, on the high sea. And you can see they are monitoring another ship. That is a Chinese, Chinese Navy. So close, so close. This was uh, uh, last year. Yeah, next. i show you a, mo a few more photos. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, this map, you see the Taiw Taiwan's uh, air defense zones. And the, uh, the red lines uh, are the, the routes of the Chinese uh, uh, fighter jets yeah, and the bombers. They, you know, they came into this, uh, this area and then went out. So you can see they had a lot of intrusion into our air defense zones. Yeah. 1,000 in 2021, 1,000 times. And last year is 1,200 times. Yeah, and uh, uh, this, uh, you can see uh, some more photos. Yeah, and that is a Chinese uh, 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 aircraft carrier, Shandong. Yeah, and from our Navy, we can see, yeah, from our East Coast. Next. And they also send fighter jets. We take photos, okay? Chinese bombers and Taiwanese fighter jets. Next. Yeah, okay. Again, yeah, and we also use the drones. Uh, to monitor, you know, Chinese uh, uh, a Navy destroyer. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, so for the students uh, who have absolutely no e uh, information or knowledge about, you know, Taiwan-China relation, okay, you probably get puzzled. You probably can say, so what, what, what? Yeah, how come China will do this to you? Okay. Yeah, I see you Taiwanese, you look like a friendly person. You are a peace-loving country. And why China do this to you? You have to get into the history, then you have idea. Okay, Taiwan and China, one small country, one big country. One island, one big continent. Okay, so in terms of the population, land size, GDP, even the, uh, even the uh, uh, military exp expenditure, we can never compete with China. Okay, they are too big. Next. Next, yeah, okay. Taiwan-China relation is a complicated, but uh, let me explain a very, very simple way, okay. Before, before 19, uh, I, think I, I should say that before 1950, uh, 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 there was no problem, okay, yeah. Taiwan was a, colo Taiwan was a colony of Japan from 1895 to 1945. 50 years, uh, Taiwan was a colony of Japan. After World War II, Japan surrendered, okay? Then what happened to Taiwan? The Chinese government came to Taiwan and said, okay, now you belong to us. So they controlled Taiwan, and they, they built up their own government. From 1945 to 1949, four years, the Chinese government, they, they controlled Taiwan and claimed Taiwan is their territory. But, but at this time, in China, there was a civil war. Okay, and uh, uh, the Chinese communists uh, uh, led by Mao Zedong, okay, they defeated, they defeated the, 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 the government, okay, which is called Republic China government. So what happened to the Republic China government? They fled to Taiwan. Huh. So in 1950, in the year 1950, you see Taiwan and China are separated again, okay, and Taiwan was run, was run by a, a government claimed itself to be China. So, you, you, so you, earlier you see my title, I'm from Republic of China. It is because the official name is Republic of China. But in China, in, the capital is in Beijing right now, okay? And their name is uh, People's Republic of China. Okay, so let me ask you, uh, can you tell the difference, Republic of China and People's Republic of China? Very difficult, right? Yeah. How come? When I, when I go out to, uh, to the street, I tell some Indians saying I'm from Republic of China. They think I'm 100% from China. So that is why in Taiwan, uh, over the past uh, seven decades, we prefer to be called as Taiwan. Okay? And, and because of this uh, separation, political separation, uh, we no longer consider we are, China, we are part of China. Yeah, we think we are independent. Yeah, and our name is uh, Taiwan. We are Taiwanese. Of course, we share the same culture. Yeah, language, culture, history, yeah, we have. But that's all. 
Yeah, it doesn't mean that we have to be politically together. Okay, next. Yeah. Um, in 19, there, there, are some, there are some changes in the next decade. In 1990s, in 1990s, uh, when Taiwan became a democracy, Taiwan, China also has its own uh, uh, economic reform that opened up. So both sides said, okay, we should put out, uh, we should put aside the difference and then we should prob probably sit down and talk and uh, have uh, some cooperation. So in 1993, uh, the, the, the envoys from both sides, they met in Singapore, shook hands, they signed agreement. So af after that, Taiwan, China could have a trade. People could also visit. I also visit China. Yeah. And also, uh, I, I could also receive friends from China. So from 1993, in the next 20 years, you see a lot of exchanges between Taiwan and China. Actually, a lot of Taiwanese companies also m make a big fortune in China. Yeah. But, but, there is a bigger, bigger uh, a, a change uh, in Taiwan-China relation, which is in 2024. What happened? At that time, the Taiwan government wanted to sign a trade agreement, a trade agreement with China, and uh, this agreement will allow more Chinese companies to come into Taiwan market. Yeah. So the young people on Taiwan, including my students, students of same your age, they were so uh, worry about their future because uh, Taiwan is so small. If a uh, Taiwanese market totally open to China, then eventually we'll lose our advantage. Yeah. So they protest in front of the Parliament House, and eventually they storm into the Parliament House and occupy for one month, demanding the government to you know withdraw the bill. So this is what we call the Sunflower Student Movement in 2014. This is a watershed uh, 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 incident because that, uh, so after that, uh, Taiwanese government policy on China, you know, made a uh, U-turn, uh, yeah, dramatically shift. So after the Taiwanese government uh, tried to keep distance from China, say, okay, yeah, we want to protect our own market. Yeah, we don't want to have too much, uh, you know, depend on you, yeah. So, so even today, the majority of the people in Taiwan still have this position, okay. So, who is, un, who is unhappy about this? China, right? China say, come on, yeah. What I want is to, you know, yeah, yeah, to swallow you, yeah, to, 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 to uh, place you under my, you know, sphere of influence. So China was so unhappy since 2014, yeah. So that's why their pressure on Taiwan, political pressure, economic pressure, and uh, military pressure, getting higher and higher, yeah, okay. But if this kind of thing, this kind of pressure happening in other countries, it doesn't matter. But the problem is that Taiwan is the leading manufacturer of all computer chips in the world. So it will have an impact on India. Yeah, so this is my point, okay. Next, yeah, okay, I'm skipping this, yeah, this. Yeah, okay, yeah, this, no, 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 this. Yeah, this is, a, this is a cartoon, I wonder if you can understand. You try, okay. That's the Taiwan national flag and Chinese national flag, okay? And in Taiwan, uh, our official name is Republic of China, right? So we say, we say to them, we are China. And China say, oh, we are also China. And China says, is so angry, say, who say you are China? We are China, you are not. Yeah, okay, then Taiwan say, okay, okay, okay. We don't call, off Chi we don't all call ourselves China. We are Taiwan. And then China so angry, say, who say you are Taiwan? You are China, yeah. You see? You see, this is a dilemma we, are face, we face every day, every day. On all international occasions, Chinese are doing so you know, ridiculous and stupid things to us Taiwanese. But we are not stupid, we are smart. Yeah, so we know what they are talking, what they are, why they are doing this. Yeah, okay, next. Yeah, and uh, so uh, you see, <laughs> yeah, uh, Chinese symbol is a panda, but this panda became very you know, angry, aggressive panda, yeah. So in the past few years, we see that the more and more people in Taiwan consider ourselves as an independent country. And the Chinese, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Chinese earlier, they uh, also had a high rate of economic growth. Yeah, but, but their economic growth going down. Now China economy is going down. Yeah. And uh, uh, if in an authoritarian country, if the economy going down, what will they do? 
they will resort to military adventurism. So they do in South China Sea, in India-China border, and also in the Taiwan Strait. Yeah, okay. All of this is because Xi Jinping, yeah, the Chinese leader. Ah, okay. Next. Yeah. Uh, finally, give me a few minutes. I talk a little bit about Taiwan, Taiwan India relations. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I uh, I said about you know like uh, um, the reason I'm here is uh, to promote the uh, you know uh, Taiwan. So I want to give you a. Uh, 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 some idea about Taiwan, China, Taiwan, India relation. This is a photo I took in Taipei, uh, festival of India. You can you see Indian and also Taiwanese. Uh, they dress uh, Indian sari and dancing. Yeah. So India's culture, India's soft power is getting you know high in Taiwan. Yeah. Many Taiwan there are a lot of Indian food place in Taiwan, and also a lot of Taiwanese people are practicing yoga. Yeah, and uh, 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 watch uh, Bollywood uh, movies. Yeah. So actually, uh, in terms of uh, you know bilateral relation, I think that uh, that uh, it's, it's growing. It's, yeah, gradually growing. Next. Yeah. Yeah. This is our office. It's called is in Vasan Viha. Yeah. Okay. Our official name is a uh, Taipei Economic and Cultural Center. Yeah. Okay. So you, you if you want to uh, apply visa to Taiwan. If you type Taiwan Embassy, you cannot find. You have to type Taipei Economic and Cultural Center. They will find in Vasan Viha. Okay. Next. Uh, we did not have office in India uh, uh, before 1990s. Okay. Yeah. In 1995, both sides, India and Taiwan, uh, signed agreement. And so we opened office here in India. You also opened office in Taipei. And uh, uh, your office in Taiwan is called India Taipei Association. Okay. India Taipei Association. You think the name is good or no? Kind of strange, right? Okay, you ask your government to change the name. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and in 2012, uh, we opened another office in Chennai, yeah, in South India. And uh, 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 just a few weeks ago, we announced we will open a new office in Mumbai. So next year, uh, we will have a new consulate in Mumbai. So in future, if you are in uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra, you want to apply for visa, you don't need to come to Delhi. You, will, you can do it in Mumbai. Okay, it's a good news. Next. Uh, and uh, uh, right now, the most significant uh, cooperation between both sides uh, is a trade. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is also a photo I took. Uh, it's a, a trade show in Delhi uh, 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 two years ago. We, we Taiwan uh, 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 companies, we have our own pavilion yeah, uh, displaying all Taiwanese products. Next. Yeah. And the bilateral trade uh, in last year is $8.5 billion. It looks good and big. Actually, it's very small. If you compare to the, you know, the figure of trade of India and Taiwan, only 1%. Yeah, too small. Yeah. And uh, India now is the fifth, fifth largest part, trade partner to Taiwan. Yeah. And uh, our trade, our investment in India is uh, 4 billion US dollars. Uh, also very small. You know how much money we invest in China? <laughs> Yeah, the Taiwanese companies invest in China 200 billion US dollars in the past 40 years. 200 billion in China, only 4 billion in India. Yeah, yeah, okay. So China, yeah, you know, China is a situation that uh, we, we spend a lot of money, we invest there, and we hope you will become good, but eventually you grow it into a big monster, you know. Yeah, so we also feel regret. Yeah, but India will have no that problem. Yeah, so we we also try to talk to, to our uh, Taiwanese companies uh, come to India invest. This is the best time. This is the best destination. This is the best time. Yeah, next. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to uh, get into the end of the, my presentation. Um, another another uh, big uh, 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 area of cooperation we do with India is education. Yeah, I. Yeah, so that so that's why today I come to uh, VIPS. Uh, I talked uh, in a university. Um, we uh, actually have a project that is uh, we uh, we know some universities in India. They 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 have language courses. Yeah, okay. They uh, learn Japanese, uh, uh, German, Spanish, French, and uh, um, some Indian students will have interest in learning Chinese. But you cannot get teacher from China, right? Probably Chinese, probably they don't want to come to India. So who, where, 
or who can come to India to teach Chinese? Taiwan. Yeah. So we have this uh, Taiwan Education Center project. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in India, now we have uh, more than 30, 30 teachers on campus in universities. They come here to teach courses, uh, in Ch Chinese language courses, and also to uh, introduce about Taiwan. Yeah. These are the Taiwanese uh, teachers in India right now. Yeah. And so if a VIPS is interested, we could yeah, discuss the possibility of a, you know, yeah, dispatching a language teacher yeah, to VIPS. Yeah, we have one in uh, uh, Amiti, you know, yeah, Jindal, yeah, Ashoka, uh, Shivnada, you know, or you know, your neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so, so uh, VIPS can consider having this uh, cooperation with us. Next. Yeah. And uh, uh, right now, uh, there are, you can see there are some figures. Um, uh, every year, uh, before COVID, before COVID, every year, oh, uh, roughly 50,000 Indians travel to Taiwan. And uh, around the same number of uh, Taiwanese travel to India. Small amount, uh, small amount, yeah. You see how many Indians uh, travel to Singapore? Yeah, okay. Probably one million, right, in a month. Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, the number of uh, Indians living in Taiwan is still small, about 7,000. But uh, there are 3,000 Indian students studying in Taiwan. Yeah, probably some of you, yeah, in future, if you want, if you're interested, you can come to Taiwan to study. Or we could cooperate. Taiwan is a university and uh, VIP has a week of sign partnership. Then you could either go to Taiwan for short term, two, three weeks, for workshop, for summer school, and then you could invite uh, your Taiwan partners university student to come here yeah to have a to have a course yeah to have an event yeah next yeah and uh, these are the famous brands Taiwanese brands in India you know uh, actually there are some you know computer companies uh, like Acer Acer is a Taiwanese okay yeah Asus your uh, laptop you know it's it's a Taiwanese company yeah you you heard of a giant giant is a bicycle yeah it's a it's the largest bicycle company in the world. And uh, they produce a very high-end bicycle, yeah, very high-end for racing. Yeah. And the Maxis is a tire company. Now they have a, they have a big uh, factory in Gujarat, and they cooperate with uh, Tata. So Tata cars, they actually use a uh, tire made by Taiwanese company. Yeah. And Foxconn, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, now they are producing iPhones here in India, and they are also expanding their, their investment, not just in, many, in uh, a, a mobile phone assembly, they also want to make a semicon semiconductor chips and also electronic vehicle. Next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This uh, next, next one. Yeah. These are the, some figures of the, uh, the Indian students studying in Taiwan. So you can see that the STEM student still the highest, uh, but we want to have more students study uh, management. You know, and other areas, management, communication, come to Taiwan to study. Yeah, next. Yeah, this is the last slide. Okay, these are some uh, 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 scholarship opportunities and also fellowship opportunity for the faculty members. Yeah, every year we, uh, we give uh, more than 120 scholarship to Indian students to Taiwan, including 70 language uh, scholarship and more than 50 uh, a degree seeking student and also uh, a faculty members going to, ta to Taiwan for research. Yeah. And among all the countries in the world, India is the biggest number. Yeah, because you are the biggest you know, in population. So the biggest number of uh, this kind of scholarship and fellowship with uh, India. Okay, so this is my presentation. I hope uh, that you enjoy. Yeah, thank you very much.